Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here. This is the Resol character review. Brand new unit released to Global this week. The review will be pretty standard here. The character overview, base and total stat analysis, all leading up to the report card where I give a little sneak peek about how those grades intertwine with the character themselves, with their abilities at the class of job overview next. A little bit about the limit break, dream and mastery ability to round out the information, all leading up to my general thoughts with some optimization at the end. Without further ado though, jumping into things, she is the brand new wind unit introduced to the game. They've given her the unique main job of servant of the void, while also giving her lancer and monk sub jobs as well. She does equip daggers, hats, cloths, and accessories, with a move of three, jump of two, so little extra mobility there. She is, yet again, another 100 cost unit. Now, from a resistance standpoint, a lot of strong resistances here. 20% to slash, although that is relatively easily penetratable. 20% still pretty nice. 15% to missile, 10% to magic. The weakness is the minus 5% to pierce while being neutral with zero to strike damage. She's not a 97 faith unit, so you don't have to worry terribly about being a status ailment. But those that are curious, 50% to blind, which is very, very good for a handful of characters that will be seen at the top end of the game that do rely on the blind status effect. 50% to toad is obviously awesome for many, where Dark Lucia has no chance to inflict toad on her whatsoever. And 10% to slow, which is a little niche, but not one of the worst ones. Now we jump into the base stats overall. As a standard damage dealer, she actually has relatively decent HP here, so things will scale relatively nicely off of that stat. Attack-wise, kind of middle of the pack, but no, certainly doesn't end up hurting her ending attack stat. She's got some buffs and some passes that we'll see will end up helping that, and the vision cards also lend themselves to helping her overall attack stat as well. So yeah, maybe a smidge of a weakness comparatively, but not the end of the world. Agility-wise, she comes in at 58 agility, so just slightly above average. Doesn't end up hurting her terribly bad. She's actually pretty decent decently fast unit for a variety of reasons that we'll end up seeing here in just a moment. Dexterity wise, a little bit above average and luck, just a little bit above average, but really nothing terribly too high or too low. And if we were to kind of whoop, transform those into a consolidated chart showing the relative strength compared to the other units, again, no real glaring weaknesses overall. When we do start to add in the board nodes and the board stats and things of that nature, we do see some changes here where they do some things to give her a little bit above average attack stat. Same thing for agility and same thing for luck while really taking a step back on the dexterity stat overall, which is kind of interesting, but there is some things to change which will help her crit rate. We'll see that in a moment. If we're looking at where those stats actually come from, again, the agility, they give her nine on the board, which is just a smidge above average, not terribly so. 27 dexterity is woefully low though. That's really why she takes a step back. And 90 luck is very, very much above average, which is what leads to that a relative strength. Now we look at the crit hit and crit avoid, which do scale off of the dexterity and luck stats and taking into effect some of her crit nodes. She ends up being just slightly above for crit hit rate, the crit avoid, a little bit above average as well because of that luck stat. There is one thing to note though, she does have a passive that increases her crit rate by 25%. And if you were to consider that passive with characters who can also equip a passive that enhances crit rate, she actually does gain some relative strength in the scheme of the game in terms of where she ends up on that line. So absolutely something you to look into there for an extra source of damage. Now we look at accuracy. This is really one of the shining spots of her as a character where the blue line here is total innate accuracy. She's like basically top five most accurate units in the game. She also has a passive that keeps her competitive with other characters. And that 25% extra passive also keeps her within top five most accurate units in the game. So very, very strong point here for her overall. But we look at from the evasion standpoint, she actually does kind of end up on the lower end of the evasion spectrum. That's not to say she's an evade unit. That being said, if you were to really kind of mess with some people and throw on an evade esper and evade equipment and max the luck stones, you could probably dodge a hit or two from some of those lesser accurate characters. You'd be surprised. Particularly when you talk about some of the synergies with fire and there are a couple of fire units that have the evade buffs. You could play with that. I'm not saying you should run that, but it's certainly an option. Now we'd look at the report card overall. She does end up a little bit higher on the effective HP side of things. Again, that health pool is a pretty decent thing for her. It's hard to really quantify survivability wise though. And we talk about stats, there's no defense or spirit innately, no passives to boost them either. She does have innately 10 AOE resistance and 10 from the weapon. So it's basically 20 AOE resistance at all times. She does have a counter ability that gives her another 15. So really hard to quantify that, but absolutely very, very strong from an AOE perspective. She has protect and shell, a damage absorb buff and a physical barrier that will appear on an attack. So there's a lot of things here 
that make her hard to kill and add to some self-sustain. So it's really hard to quantify exactly where the effect of HP ends up because there's a couple different ways in which she survives and ends up mitigating damage. Now the primary stat, I'm going to B- minus here again. She does get lifted up by some of the good vision cards, which do buff her attack stat. She's got a passive that can help get it higher as well. But overall going with a B- minus just because of where you might realistically end up. And partially because I'm discounting this just a little bit because one of her biggest weaknesses, which I'll come back to, she's got no innate slash resistance penetration in her kit so even if you do get a relatively respectable attack stat you really got to take into consideration what you can do for damage based on penetrations as well now agility wise going with an a minus she's very very fast her main passive has a 12 percent agility buff puts her at 86 agility versus the ur average of 80 when you have those main and sub vision card slots equipped and for context this is exactly the same speed as yuffie at 86 agility so that's a very very good thing overall accuracy wise also going with an a plus here again 100 percent hit chance on both of the sub jobs she doesn't really need it she's one of the most accurate characters in the game innately but certainly good to know but you really can't get much more accurate than her she's one of the characters that sets the bar now evasion again going b minus here likely would not run for evade but with the luck is high enough that maxing it probably would yield some good results not in an evade meta though when you're in an evade meta and everyone's gearing for a lot of accuracy she's going to get hit by absolutely everything so don't even consider it that being said her limit break also does kind of help with that considering that it does have the blind status effect which reduces accuracy now movement I'm going with an A. She's got that innate jump of two. That's awesome. And she has a passive that will give her move and jump one as well. So a lot of flexibility there for certain kinds of maps. The passives, I'm going with an A here. Absolutely stellar main passive ability. And the second options are really good sub options too. We'll talk about those in a minute. The counter ability is going with a B plus here. The main counter has some good survivability and utility on it, but it is slightly limited for range. So I do think that's a little bit of a downside, but we'll talk about that too in a second. The overall kit going A minus loads of utility on that main job super well rounded for self survivability there's no real one easy way to take her out as we'll end up seeing for a final grade of an a minus now again a character with very few flaws great wind synergy overall and, and kind of gets that age-old question wind is so good who do you actually take out to put her in here with and obviously it would be resol and flagbear glaciella and then you have a hard decision whether you go joom or sadali or ayaka or ed elric if you're going that route in a couple weeks from now he's a new wind unit coming out as well and obviously all of those characters drastically change the team and what you end up doing it's it's a good problem to have when you consider that there's a lot to think about now we look at the passive abilities here natural liar and again i apologize i made this presentation pre her release so a lot of these translated names are from the jp translations this main support buff is superb uh, agility of 12 percent accuracy 25 defense pen of 40 you normally get these three passives on three different abilities the fact that they have them all in one is almost broken uh, in a sense that she gets a ton of all the favorite things you'd like to see after that there's really a judgment call in my opinion between empty walk which is that move jump of one or deadly instinct which is the attack buff of 24 percent and the crit rate of 25 i don't think her striker pierce damage is nearly high enough to lean into either one of these other passives and the hp up level one is pretty decent but i think deadly instinct probably gets you more consistent results now the counter abilities baptism of detachment again is a four range counter ability 30 percent chance to proc it gives her 15 aoe resistance while also giving decreased agility of 20 percent for that enemy so again overall i like the aoe resistance that it gives her but this having a four square range means that if someone's attacking you outside of that range this won't proc and obviously it just means nothing at that point the rest of these are okay, but they're a little too short-ranged for my liking. I would stick with Baptism of Detachment. Now, the main job buffs, we talk about these two. I still need to explore her AI, so I don't know this for certain. I would imagine that the second one here is the priority. Teammate buffs tend to be the priority, but not always. But going through these first and then second, Self-Defense Lie, Protect and Shell, obviously great buffs for her. There is an ability where it will decrease AP consumption of 33% so long as one of them is active. So even if a character dispels Protect or dispels the Shell, as long as you have the other active this still remains which absolutely awesome and then propagation of deception this is a great 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 buff absorb 30 percent of the damage done for three turns for herself and allies it will also be a 40 percent attack buff for herself so again even though that base attacks relatively low her attack stat does end up recovering from it and it does also grant an effect of dispelling auto revive for herself for three turns so dispel re-raise you'd love to see a buff like that so overall 
Pretty strong abilities here for a one-two punch. But we look at the abilities of the main job themselves. So end active is a LOS or line of sight ability that you have to see your enemy directly. It will regen some AP. 13 AP is pretty cheap overall for it though. It's a pretty decent first ability to kick things off. Seal Kiss is a very good ability. This is a cross-shaped AoE. Reduces counter chance of 100 for three turns to targets. Will also absorb 30% of the damage done. Now, I don't know if that 30% stacks with the buff that we were just talking about. I do still have to test that. But if it does, that's a lot of health regen. But it also is a decreased healing power down of 40 for those targets as well. So, again, a couple nice pieces of utility on that ability. Now, Deceit and Betrayal. This is, again, one of those abilities where you can pick up to two targets, but it scales off of their unit resistance. So, it's a nice little hybrid where you do damage to multiple targets, but it scales off unit resistance. It's also a 25% slash in peril. Leading up finally to Barrier Steel, which is a break physical barrier. Again, another unit oriented attack but it also gives her a 50% physical barrier for one time. But it's also a dispel buff and dispel haste and all these other buffs. It's an excellent ability. Now, obviously, it's, she seems to skew a little more on the unit attack side of thing rather than AoE, but Deceit and Betrayal is that kind of nice middle ground where it technically does damage to people. So I'm not really worried about how much damage she does on the battlefield. And again, we talked about the lack of slash resistance penetration in her kit. The scene betrayal being that 25% slash in peril, I actually think is a good thing here where if you figure most enemies probably have like 25 to 35, it can go higher. But if you can imperil them down to like zero or 5%, then it really doesn't matter what her penetration is because she's effectively taken away most of the resistance. So you would obviously love to see that go negative instead to amplify her damage, but not the end of the world. Now when we look at this sub job here, Sweet Whisper is definitely like a PVE or a manual PVP ability 25 percent chance to inflict paralyze poison or immobilize and decreases accuracy of 50 while they are inflicted by one or all of these kind of a fun x factor ability but nothing really too special two blades though again kind of underwhelmed i see this as maybe a pve ability where it is a double hit but it's very very short range and the decrease agility of 20 percent is kind of whatever that's already on our counter ability i don't really think it's all that material so this sub job probably a pass in terms of priorities the lancer sub job i think is okay i don't really think there's anything very strong on here other than maybe flash in the void this is again a three range ability direct line of sight of the enemy it does technically pierce though so again you can hit two characters if they are lined up 200 percent modifier guaranteed hit and increases the crit rate by 25 so again other ways to amplify that crit rate as the battle goes on that being said though i think the monk might be my favorite one here because of the chakra potential for some of those second battles where if you have a teammate that's slow again we need to really test her ai priority here but the 40 percent hp restore very strong the regen also very strong for herself and that ally as well if this ai works the way i hopes and that she will help on the second fight restore the health of her teammate this is very good while also still giving her access to a 100 percent hit chance to wave attack which again not that she necessarily needs it but for 12 ap late in the battle being able to ensure that you don't miss certainly a nice thing to have now we get to the limit break here this is a giant aoe bigger anything that she has in her kit 49 ap it's a 67 percent chance to inflict blind while also having the ability that it will reduce their defense penetration by 30 if they're blinded. So again, another kind of like great way to help her survive ability where A, if people are blind, they're likely going to miss, so she's take no damage. But if they do hit you, they're going to have their defense penetration drastically reduced as well. Also helps some of the damage mitigation. So overall, I actually do like this limit break for what it brings to the team fight and what it can do to sow a little chaos into things. From the mastery ability, this is where she gets 10 of her AoE resistance. Attack of 10%, really nothing too, too special. The transcendence or the dream ability gives her starting AP of 15. This is kind of a recurring trend of some of these newer characters to help them spam a lot of abilities. And that's obviously a big thing for her. The accuracy 15 here is also where she gets to her high accuracy levels so definitely want to transcend her and upgrades the the skill as well now we look at the tmr review this tmr is okay in my opinion i like that it has five agility always nice to see some of these to kind of stack those agility points the agility buff of 25 percent is okay but we do have a lot of characters that already do some agility buffs the aoe resistance of 15 also okay but again she can proc that on her counter ability which will not stack with this and there's a lot of characters that do have teammate buffs that give aoe resistance as well you know someone like sadali that's kind of one of the things he does so this overall you know maybe not on resol but on other characters 
The nice thing about this is that it is a unit buff, not a teammate buff. So if you're trying to get creative with your movement, sure, I could see some upside here. But overall, not the strongest thing about her. I think it's only okay as far as TMRs go. Now, for my general thoughts, you know, great utility overall. The Dispel buffs and Dispel Haste, along with the Break Physical Barrier on that singular ability. Dispel Re-Raise buff that allows the allies and herself to absorb 30% damage. The AoE healing power down to 40 and the reduction of the counter chance of 100%. The Blind and the Defense Penetration reduction on the Limit Break. There's a lot of things here to influence a team fight that will obviously help her and her teammates now statistically also very strong with good agility accuracy attack overall hp levels and the aoe resistance really no like big statistical weaknesses from that perspective there is a worrying downside though of the lack of slash res pen it's only 20 percent on the weapon and although as i mentioned that 25 percent of peril can kind of help to mitigate that resistance you have to get pretty creative with your vision cards otherwise and she's really kind of capped that 20 percent from an equipment perspective which is kind of a big downside and obviously she does have that up to 50 defense penetration with the trust stone passive which is pretty standard for damage dealers but as far as tank busting goes she's probably going to struggle comparatively but that may not be the end of the world again flag bear glass yellow does that job very well so it might be overkill to have two units on the battlefield at the same time that can do that her job is to kill evade units and she can absolutely do that now the sub jobs also leave a little bit to be desired nice that she does have access to three types of attacks though the slash the pierce and the strike you like to see that versatility decent ap management as well 15 starting on the transcendence the 33 percent decrease ap consumption with the buff and a further 15 percent decrease ap consumption on the weapon which we'll see in a couple slides here and also very interesting blend of survivability again protect and shell physical barrier on attack the absorb 30 percent damage the defense penetration reduction and the blind and the limit break some characters are a one-trick pony and how you can beat them whether it's just courage you just remove the courage and they're nothing or they have a barrier break the barrier and they're nothing she at least has a couple different ways that she can sustain herself so that's very nice to see now the job based vision cards what to expect the one coming out for her this week is the slash rest of 24 percent the attack buff and the accuracy this obviously is great for just kind of giving some of these well-rounded stats that have a, a lot of application in many areas of the game that slash res does have some limited upside given how much penetration we're seeing from characters like sephiroth and a lot of the fire units but overall it's certainly not a bad thing to have and when you talk about potential imperils you know you figure if you have 24 percent slash res here not that this would be a, a main card i think it is a sub card but assuming you have it on main for the sake of math if you give your whole team 24% slash res, that means that the enemy Rysol imperil of 25% basically just brings you back to where you are, as opposed to potentially making you go negative, which would greatly amplify the damage otherwise. Now, there is some good news, though, here. We do have two global exclusive job-based vision cards, which are dagger eligible, that JP did not have. I actually genuinely really like the Resnick the Hoppy one because there is slash resistance penetration on this. So we're talking about creative ways to get her extra of that. This is certainly another option option for that and i know resnick the hoppy is going to be getting some buffs on the resol vision card as well so there might actually be some interesting party combinations there and then sylvie is a great rainbow unit overall just to kind of heal people and give those shields or even sylvie aside if you have a, a support unit that can use the sylvie card to give the 16 aoe resistance that obviously is a foundational piece for many teams as well so this actually does very good things for some extra upside for resol as vision cards go now the esper synergy is pretty straightforward here you're obviously looking for wind attack slash attack attack percent human killer i do still think it's good to have accuracy on here you don't want to just give up altogether you should have some form of it still and anything past that is really matchup specific so keeping it relatively high level dark touch yourself it's definitely hits all of these nodes is probably the best one provided you're not already using it on your flag bearer glaciella that being said dark odin obviously and regular odin are two of the best as well for various reasons i think tetra sylphid has some upside here where you get that wind resistance so it's good for mirror matchups you still have wind attack and again for that rare niche situation you're trying to run her for evade and catch someone off guard you have that 25 evasion on here as well and then golden armament i like just for having some of that defense the wind attack the crit evade it's kind of like a bulkier esper that i think just pairs well with her but i'll keep it pretty high level there now when it comes to the weapon optimization dagger wise i almost think you have to have this dagger on her again this gives the aoe resistance of 10 the decrease ap consumption of 15 and slash res pen of 20 which is temp higher than what you'd get on a trust stone passive and although that difference between 10 and 20 may not sound enormous I think practically speaking, when it comes to much higher slash res enemies, it actually is more impactful going from 10 to 20 as opposed to, say, going from like 50 to 60. There's some math theory behind that, but I won't spend too much time going over that. Just know that I think the 20 is better than the trust on passive you could otherwise equip. 
as your only source of slash res pen. Now the alternative could be the Mage Masher here. Obviously on the Assault build, there is a fair amount more of attack, but you are losing a lot of those survivability and AP management options. You do still get the initial AP of 10. I just don't know how potent that really is over the broad course of a battle. And then just for kicks, again, talking about evasion, the main gauche is kind of a fun one to entertain given that it has the 28 evade on it. Well, it's some crit evade and slash attack, but this is really here just for special mention, not actually a real recommendation. But uh, that's the Resol character review in a nutshell. Again, there's a lot of things to like. Uh, I will say JP seems to have tempered the dominance of how strong Wind actually gets. So though Resol is kind of a solid character, I don't know if there's going to be massive trickle-down ramifications from her introduction to the game. She certainly excels at her job of being a great anti-evasion unit, so I see no problem applying her in those situations. But at this point in the game, you really are trying to consider the economics of what you're spending for Viz and which characters you're saving for. We know there's a ton of 100 cost units there, so really kind of a difficult judgment call to say whether or not she's worth the pull or not. I would be conservative and say likely an easy pass for many people, but those that do pull her, I have no doubt you're likely to get some really good value from her as well. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll talk to you all soon.